my name is Mark Mudge, and I am a pastor in Guatemala City. And uh, m- the most of you I know very well, and I was a pastor here and served here for over a decade, or well, served here over a decade, but not only pastor for a few years. And so, this it's my privilege to be able to give a a ministry update in this Sunday school hour. And so, I want first I want to begin to read a few scriptures to talk about the Great Commission and the work, the focus of the work that we have in Guatemala. Then I'd like to take a few minutes to give a report about some of the things the Lord has done in the past six months, because I was here six months ago. And so then we have a few videos of testimonies from people in Guatemala to be able to share with you. Hopefully everything will work out with videos. With the, we got subtitles on the videos, so You'll have to read fast in order to follow along. Then, And then I'd like to have a little bit of time of Q&A. So we're going to try and do a lot in this hour, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get, get through everything. So first off, I, I'd like to express my thanks to you guys. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for all of your love. Thank you for the messages. Thank you for many of you who are coming to visit us in Guatemala. And it's a great joy to be back here with you all and to see you. I'm very thankful for your, particularly your prayers and also your financial support because we're able to be there um, because you guys are providing for us and sent us. And so we are very appreciative to be able to be here, to be able to see you guys again. So thank you. Thank you for it's important to remember that the the fruit that we have there is also a fruit of this church. So we want to give praise and glory to, to God for the things that he's done. So let's begin to think about the Great Commission. It, uh, in the work that we have in Guatemala, we're focusing on church planting, discipleship, and evangelism. And we've been going through the Book of Mark. And we've come to the end of Book of the Mark in our Sunday morning preaching series in Guatemala. And we've come to the resurrection. And we've been thinking about what are the impact, what are the implications of the resurrection? What is the, what is the significance of the resurrection? And so last Sunday, that was the Sunday morning sermon. And so, so some of the things we considered are the impact of the resurrection on what did it mean for Jesus Christ himself? What did it mean for our salvation? And what did it mean for the, the world? And so some of those topics, stolen some of those topics from Albert Martin, I thought they were the simplest, clearest way to go to describe some of the implications of the resurrection. So what does the, the resurrection mean for Christ himself? What does it mean for our salvation, and then what does it mean for the world? When we consider what does the resurrection mean for Christ, we think and we remember how he prophesied that he would rise from the dead. Do you remember in John chapter 2, verses 19 to 21, around there, where Jesus prophesied that, if, if you destroy this temple, I'll raise it up in three days. Well, the resurrection tells us with a great clarity, who Jesus is and who he is in his perfection and in his person. That he is God and he's worthy to be worshipped. He knows the future. And it, the, the resurrection authenticates to all who he is and that his sacrifice has been accepted before the Father. So what does it mean for Jesus himself? Well, we want to consider the stages of Christ's um, humiliation and exaltation. If you read a systematic theology and you focus on Jesus Christ, one of the the topics that a systematic theology will focus in on is how Jesus humbled himself by taking on humanity. But then how he is exalted after his death in his resurrection 
in his ascension and his sitting at the right hand of the Father and then his coming again. And he'll come again bodily. So these, these four stages are referred to as Christ's exaltation. He's in a, an exalted um, intercessory place now. He's interceding for us before the Father um, and praying for us, for our good, before the Father now. And he's doing this in his exalted state. So remember, the, his exalted state begins at the resurrection and continues in his ascension and then his seating at the right hand of the Father and then his return, his bodily return. So what does the resurrection mean from, for Christ? It is his change from his, humiliated, his state of humiliation to his state of exaltation. So it means a significant thing, a significant uh, understanding of what happened to our Savior. And what is he doing now? So when we consider the resurrection, what it means for it, it exalts Jesus Christ. If you read in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, we can read a verse about that uh, that describes... Romans chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, it says, Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So there's a great declaration that's taking place in the resurrection that he's declared in his person... And it, um, to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness. So by the Holy Spirit and by the resurrection from the dead. So you can see in verse 3 his incarnation. How he's born of the seed of David according to the flesh. It's part of his humiliation. And then you can see his exaltation in verse 4 where he's declared to be the Son of God with power. So when we consider the resurrection, what does it mean for Jesus Christ? has a great impact in me and on Jesus Christ. And it's good for us to consider what does it mean for Jesus Christ and not just ourselves. Often when we think of the resurrection, we think, what does it mean for us? But what, first we should begin, well, what does it mean for Jesus? Then when we consider what does it mean for us, it has great meaning for us. It, 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 is, it has an impact on our salvation. It's connected with uh, uh, 1 Peter 1 Verse 3 says, The same power that he rose, he, that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, he employed this power in, resurre- in regeneration. So we're made alive, we're given a new, um, we're born again by that same work of God, that same power. So it has an impact in our regeneration, giving, giving a new life, new desires, a new heart. But it also has an impact in our justification. Romans 4.25 reads, and we can turn over there and be reading verses 24 and 25. Um, Romans 4.24, but also for us, it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead and was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. So the resurrection is a great declaration from the Father that the work of of Jesus Christ has been accepted, that the payment for sin was perfect and without blemish. The resurrection, when uh, when Jesus is raised for our justification, it doesn't mean that the resurrection plays a part in the payment of sin, but rather... That the resurrection, we must have faith in a, in a raised person, a living person. We can't put our faith in a dead person. We, have, we are in union with him in his death, burial, and resurrection. So we, our union with him is part of our salvation. We must be, be made a, um, alive. Um, he must be alive in order for his righteousness in order to, to apply to our account in an imputation. 
So his resurrection is the guarantee that his work on the cross has been accepted. And it vindicates Jesus Christ before all. So the resurrection plays a part in our justification, in our regeneration, in our glorification. This is the, the, the aspect of the resurrection that many Christians think about. And we think about the connection with our salvation. That he's been given a raised body and so we'll be given a, a raised body and we are a resurrected body. And we read that in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 12 to 20. So then all this is leading up to the resurrection. What does it mean for Jesus Christ? What does it mean for our salvation? And then lastly, what does it mean for the world? And that's the point I'm getting to. The, let's read in Acts chapter 10. Verses 39 to 43. How does it impact how Peter preaches the gospel to Cornelius? And we read Acts chapter 10, verses 39 to 43. Peter says, And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Notice his bodily resurrection. And verse 42, what does it mean then for great commission ministry? What does it mean then as we go out and preach the gospel? In verse 42, and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he... It is he who was ordained by God to judge the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. You see what the resurrection means for ministry? It means in verse 42 that we have a great declaration that he'll judge the living and the dead. That his exalted state that he's in, sitting at the right hand of the Father, his mediatorial lordship, him as Lord... That this victory is already won. He's already reigning as Lord, as mediatorial Lord. And so when we go out and we declare the gospel, whether in Guatemala or Orlando, we're declaring the victory is belongs to Jesus Christ. And that he's already won. It's just a matter of time. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And you either bow now in salvation or you bow later in, in condemnation. But Jesus is Lord. So... Where the victory is won, so that when we preach and when we proclaim, we trust in him that the resurrection is declared in a, a real historical event that we can point to, that all of history points to and recognizes um, Buddha's dead, Muhammad's dead, Joseph Smith is dead, the, but Jesus is alive. And Jesus being alive. Not only being alive as a person, but being in the exalted state as, as Lord means that we declare that the victory is already his. The authority is all his, for him, and he, we know he will judge the living and the dead because he rose from the dead. Look at how Paul knew this truth as well in Acts 17, a well-known verse. In verses 30 to 31, when, Jesus, when Paul is preaching in the Areopagus, it says, Paul says in verse 30, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. You see the authority? It's a declaration. We're supposed to preach that to all men, the command of God, that they're to repent. And why? In verse 31, because he's appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he's ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by the raising him from the dead. You see the, how the exalted state of Jesus Christ plays an impact on how the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter think about ministry. They know the victory is already Christ, that he's won a great victory through suffering, and he has moved from a state of humiliation to exaltation, and that the resurrection gives the, the declaration 
that all will be judged by Jesus Christ. And so when we then think about ministry in Guatemala, we can trust, or ministry here, or ministry anywhere else in the world, that we can trust that Jesus Christ has all authority and all the glory and worship goes to him. So then how to connect those things practically? Well, uh, we want to glorify Jesus Christ by trusting him, by preaching the gospel, by working, continuing to work in the church plant, by discipling, by evangelizing there. And so I'm going to move now from the, the doctrine of the resurrection to uh, about 15, 20 minutes of report of Guatemala. So uh, what's happened in the past six months, essentially? So in, uh, when we think back, I came last July. And it's always a privilege and a joy to a high point of our year to be able to come and worship with you guys on, on these Sundays. So we usually come in February because Ashley has some work opportunities and those work opportunities pay for our tickets in order to come. So it's, a, it's convenient for us to continually come back at this time. And the weather's nice too. <laughs> the last September... We were able to have a conference, and we had a conference at the church, and many of the brothers were able to come from Cornerstone. Pastor Michael preached in the conference, and Edgar. And we had a conference over the, essentially, over a lot of charismatic issues. So, what about apostles today? Are there apostles today, prophets, workers of healing, of healing ministries? Uh, there seems to be on the west side, there seems to be more charismatics and prosperity churches than on the east side. When I drive around on the west side thing with our uh, with Leah and her house, it seems to be more influential there. So it's very influential in Guatemala and it's very helpful for the people to go over those, those doctrines once again. So Edgar came and preached a sermon about tongues. Pastor Michael preached about the Spirit's work in the public worship of God's people and about what is true conversion, what are the fruits of true conversion and from First Thessalonians. And he preached that sermon on a Sunday night. If you haven't heard it, I would recommend listening to that sermon on a, and getting it off of YouTube or sermon audio. It's very encouraging to, to see the work of God in the people at Thessalonica in First Thessalonians chapter 1. So then in October... We were able to have another baptism and membership service, and four, four more people joined as uh, part of the Iglesia Antorcha. And today we'd like to be able to share some of their testimonies to you by playing them. Well, we have them online. We're going to try and give you subtitles so that you can, those of you who don't understand Spanish, can be able to read and follow along with the testimonies. So the, it's very encouraging to be able to hear from the people themselves what the impact of what Jesus Christ has done in their lives. So it's very always that you guys know it's 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 a high point of the year to be able to go have one of those services where you give glory to God for the work that He's done in the people's lives. In November, Ashley's uh, grandfather passed away, and. You guys know that Alex is a cousin. Uh, Alex um, Barrera is, is a member of, oh, Ashley has conveniently passed out a, a, a gift to all you guys. That's, it's got pictures of people in our small church, and so I can, I'm supposed to refer to the card in order to. Uh, so I'm referring to the young man who visited you guys a few weeks ago on the upper right-hand corner. And there's a picture of him. He's a member of the, our family, but also a member of the church. So we're very thankful for the work that the Lord has done in him. He had the same grandfather, obviously, as a cousin of uh, Ashley's. And so it was very encouraging at the funeral to be able to see him be able to preach the gospel. And uh, using Ephesians. Ephesians is his favorite book. And so he's talking about Ephesians verses 1 to 10 versus many of you know and treasure. So it's very encouraging to be able to see him take the initiative and the to be able to 
try and communicate the gospel to his own family. So that my uh, Ashley's grandfather had a background in the Church of God Seventh Day. So it's a very, um, if you're familiar with that church, it's very legalistic, very, um, the gospel is not understood there. It's a very much a works-based system. And so it's, it's very helpful and very important to be able to preach the gospel at a funeral time like that. So it's really encouraging for me to be able to see now church members taking that initiative. So I'm trying to prep him to, to share that same, preach that same message in open air preaching. So he's nervous, but he's uh, he's preparing it, and God willing, it he'll he'll preach that soon in uh, in an open air setting. So I'm sharing that that time and that testimony to be able to communicate that it's very encouraging to see somebody that you're discipling taking up the same message. So then. A change that's happened since the last time is uh, I've been able to do open air preaching in Spanish, and I have a few a few different um, sermoncitos we call them or sermonettes. Sermonettes sounds worse in Spanish, maybe or in English, maybe, but it's a, it's maybe a twenty thirty minute sermon on an open air preaching, and so I'll I'll preach a few different texts: Romans three verses 20, nine to twenty six, and you remember this is that's the bad news and the good news. The bad news of who we are before God and the good news of what Jesus Christ has done. Or I'll preach Matthew 5 verses 1 to 10 about the Beatitudes and what are the marks of a true Christian. Or another text is Titus 3 verses 1 to 7. Or so or 3 to 7 really focuses in on uh, our depravity, what we were before Christ, and then how does he regenerate us and justify us. So just simple gospel sermons. It was very encouraging to me to be able to preach in Spanish and for the brothers in the church to, to say, oh, that was good. That was clear. <laughs> so I kind of rely on them. I rely on Lee and Alex. They're bilingual to be able to tell me, no, that was not clear. You need more practice. Don't, don't preach. Or yes, continue. That was good and clear. So I remember Alex it was the first time I, I went with him. And I said I was going to preach in Spanish. He was like, oh, no. I can, I can, I can see his face. And I said, I just, well, Lee said it was clear. And he, and he looked like he still didn't believe me. And so, and so it, it was very encouraging to preach. And him afterwards said, yeah, it was clear. So that's very encouraging to me. I'm trying to work on that for a long time and to be able to get to that point. So I'm... So praise God, I'm able to teach in Spanish, the Sunday school classes, do the call to repentance, those different parts of the liturgy or the parts of orders of um, parts of the service in Spanish, Lord's Supper in Spanish, um, conversations, Bible studies. But still, I, I'm still waiting to make the jump on sermons until it's clear. It's the most important thing is serving the people and. So Lee has done a great job translating, serving. So we'll get more on the Russies later, but uh, what a blessing they've been. So then in moving on to January, in January, it was a great joy to be able to go to Bolivia. And so they invited us to go preach. Uh, some of the brothers in Cochabamba invited us to, one of the pastors there, Pastor Harrison, son of Pastor Mateo, invited us to go and preach at a youth event. And so it was very encouraging to see maybe 100, 100 youth come more than they expected. So people came from um, 16 hours, so yeah, like 300 um, youth. So when they, we use the word joven in Spanish, it's like um, it's a very wide term. It's not like teenagers. It's like anywhere from 12 to 40, basically, <laughs> it seems. If you, if you think about it in the Bible, the Bible does the same thing. And uh, when it talks about young men, it talks about this age from. So if you're 39, be encouraged. <laughs> you're still a uh, hoven, or you're still a young person. So it, it was a lot, a number of pastors came to this event. A number of uh, maybe 300 youth came to this event. And it was very encouraging to see people drive 16 hours to come and other people from various, um, taking the buses from various places all over the country. 
And then we just said, I never preached so much in so short amount of time. And all, it was all we could do to, to counsel people, study, preach. And we were, I was, Ashley had the opportunity to teach to young ladies. She taught about the fear, what does the fear of God mean? And then what's the role, we're using the book of Proverbs. What does the fear of God mean? And then what is the role of a woman? A godly woman. So I was with the guys using Proverbs 7, preaching about about sexual purity, and then also about the fear of God, and how it's the, the fear of God is the heart of godliness. What's the difference between a Pharisee and a and a true Christian? Well, the fear of God. The fear of God is the the heart of godliness, is what John Murray said. So it's a very important theme in how we walk every day as a Christian. We, as in the preaching there, I was able to go through the various sermons in the book of Mark to talk about the connection with what Christ did and the local church. It was very interesting to go to that theme. And the name of the conference was Living Stones from First Peter 2. And so to give you an idea, we, we preached on discipleship. Uh, evangelism and how Christ sets the model of ministry for us today in the church. We preached on the parables and how what Christ preached about the parables of the, the four soils and how that helps us to be able to minister in the church. We, we talked about legalism from Mark chapter 7 and what is that, how that important that is for us in the church to understand that the threat of legalism. We talked about uh, the rich young ruler, and after the rich young ruler, Jesus has a conversation with the disciples about who's the true, um, who's your true family. When Peter says, oh, I've left, we've left all to follow you. And Jesus encourages him, saying, well, you've received in this life and in the come uh, more fathers, mothers, brothers, lands than you can ever receive in this life. And so he talks about the true family is here in the local church. It's very interesting to think about the Gospels and then all of the things that Christ is doing for us in, in the local church. So it was a very encouraging time, very busy time to be able to, to see, and a joyful time to be able to see the, the, what the, look, the work that the Lord is doing there. So the, um, yes. No, um, Pastor Michael's question is about whether we had problems going in with immigration. And uh, 2017, we got Lee and I got stuck in immigration, kind of immigration cell for 12 hours, and they tried to uh, make us pay more money. And in order, it was it's kind of corruption. It's kind of the way things work in, in Latin America, other countries. Many of you guys know that that kind of stuff. So um, no, um, we were able to get in. I was glad because I had my Ashley was with me, pregnant, and. Uh, I was very thankful we were able to get in. We had, we did some of that immigration work beforehand. So we didn't wait to, to arrive in the country. But thank you for the question. So then, uh, picking up the pace a little bit, um, the it's very encouraging to see some of the evangelistic opportunities that the church has had, whether through through uh, funerals, through we we meet every other Sunday at our house at our church. We have a lunch, discipleship time, study the Proverbs, go out and evangelize in the community. It's very encouraging to see the people participating in that that work. Um, It's encouraging to see the conversations that many people have with their families as well, or people taking the initiative to invite their family members to go out to dinner with us in order for us to talk about the gospel. Like I can I can tell by the demeanor and the purpose that some of the members have in the family. It's kind of like, yeah, let's uh, let's go let's go eat pizza with this family member, and I, we know it's a those are the nicest evangelistic, easiest setup. You know, you have a nice dinner and you're sitting there talking about life with somebody, and then you begin to go into the gospel. So. Uh, it's very encouraging to see the discipleship in the in, in the lives of the people. We're using the book of we in last year, 2018, we did the inductive studies in the book of Romans, finished that up, and now and we began into Proverbs. We're still in the book of Proverbs. We're in chapter 
18 still. And so we're going verse by book, verse through the book of Proverbs, uh, as a, using it as a form of a discipleship. We've studied books in the church in 2018 and beginning into 2019, like Distinct by Design, understanding the roles of men and women in the home. What's the biblical role in the home? What's the biblical role in the church? What's the biblical role in the world of men and women? It's very needed in Latin America. There's great misunderstanding about the roles of men and women. We, took, we studied uh, the church, Why Bother? You guys did that uh, maybe 2016. And so by Jeffrey Johnson, that has been a great blessing. And it's like every chapter of that book about what is a biblical understanding of the ministry in the church was is like needed and, and, our, and helpful in our local church. So then right now we're studying the book Redemption Accomplished and Applied by John Murray. And so we're going over what is the work of Christ? What did it mean in his atonement? And what it, in the extent of the atonement, the perfection of the atonement, the nature of the atonement. And then it goes over what does it what mean to have the, the work of Christ applied to our lives. Uh, it's been a blessing to see the growth in the lives of the people. Uh, and uh, in the lives of the, the members of the church. Every, I, w- I, uh, I could take all the people that in the card that you've received and be able to talk about the growth and, and, the, and seeing in them in their lives has been very encouraging to us. Um, the Rusis have continued to be one of the, the greatest blessings in, in our lives. The, it's such a joy to be able to go with a, another family from here and continually as the years go by we're, we thank God for them. Uh, Lee is preaching this morning. Pray for him. He's preaching in Isaiah 53, the uh, verses 6 to 12, 6 to 13, some numbers around there. And so it's a it's a, an incredible blessing to see them be a pillars in the church and to see all the the members have great respect for them and love for them, their faithfulness to. To preach the gospel, their faithfulness to disciple, uh, that I don't worry about, um, oh no, what's Lee going to say while I'm gone? <laughs> and if you're watching Lee, I'm praying, I will be praying for you. And normally we watch and eat breakfast because we're at a different time uh, and watch the Sunday, mo- the Sunday school class. So it's, it's very common for us because our houses are right next to each other. So it's very common for us to hear if I, if I turn off the YouTube channel. For me to hear Pastor Rick continuing in the class from their house, so we we both listen to it on our in our houses in the morning. So uh, we're very thankful to be able to be here with you guys this week and, as well. And uh, like I said, this Sunday is a highlight of our year to be able to come and worship Christ with you guys. So um, I'd like to be able to transition now to be able to share a few testimonies with you by video. And so these testimonies are at the time of the membership class. And uh, I want to be able to communicate by them speaking to you about the work that Christ has done in their lives. So um, we've talked about the impact of the resurrection. And are are, are we ready with the videos? Okay. 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 Well, we'll go ahead and we'll... we'll, uh, These videos that we have on YouTube are... Some of them are in Spanish, some of them are in English. We try to do both. And we... So... There's a beginning part of it. We made a little series where I'm talking about baptism. So we're going to go past me and just try to go right to the testimonies of the people. And uh, and then I'll try and give a little explanation if it doesn't, if the subtitles don't match up. So the first testimony is Renata. Hola 
salvé de aquí, pues yo no hice nada. Como es obra de Dios. Me parece muy sencillo mi testimonio. Así puede parecer, pero ha sido un cambio grande She's para mí. Mi vida antes de Cristo era una vida aparentemente normal y en paz con Dios. Crecí en un hogar con creencias católicas y siempre en la casa estuvo presente el conocer a Dios y la importancia de confiar en Él. Sin embargo, no existía en mí la convicción del pecado ni la salvación. She didn't have a conviction of Sabía que no había robado y que mis pecados eran normales. She her sins were normal. Sabía que Jesús había muerto el Viernes mm. Santo y resucitado el Domingo de Resurrección y eso era lo so que se celebraba en Semana Santa. Dead, pero no tenía ninguna trascendencia en mi vida. Y cuando pecaba, pedía perdón a Dios y luego olvidaba el asunto porque en términos generales, pues, siempre me porté bien. So she really thought Empecé a escuchar el Evangelio verdadero cuando conocimos a Mark y familia y a Lee y familia. Y recuerdo muy concretamente una conversación que tuve con Gaby la cual me confrontó muy duramente, ¿verdad? Para mi gusto. So Gabby got to witness to her, acerca de lo que Dios quería like de really, mí y de mi actuar uh, real, ¿verdad? Como pecadora. Um, bueno, mi vida desde ese día ha cambiado mucho porque And that really Dios ha despertado en mí her, y que me ha agradado y buscar su palabra. She started to look in God's word. Me ha dado la comida. De mi pecado, God has given her conviction over her sin and to look to Christ Dios to be forgiven. What his sacrifice truly meant on the cross y la de ese para la vida del and how that sacrifice, how that should impact Todavía her own life. Cosas que tengo que Pero ahora tengo el deseo de estudiar She now has the desire to study the Word of God. And also to think about his son. To teach him the Word of God. God has also been very merciful with their uh, marriage. Before she would think that her husband could only talk about the Bible. And even that was kind of like, uh, mí, irritating to her. Ahora, hablamos de otros temas, and now, pero you know, they talk about other things, but now it's a delight for her to talk about the Word of God and share that uh, with her husband. Sigo pidiendo al Señor que me ayude a tener más humildad She asks the Lord to help her to grow in humility día día ver mi y and to understand her sin and to grow in all aspects of her life. <laughs> it was really cold that day. So it's been a great joy to be able to, for us to see Renata and her changed life because she's someone who came to the church uh, basically as a Catholic and was attending because her husband was a Christian 
and the church, I mean, we met in her house to begin the first six months, so, <laughs> so we were afraid that we, when we would switch to a different location, perhaps she wouldn't continue to come, but it's been an, a miracle of God. As we, as we prep the next video, um, it's been a, a miracle of God to see the work of Christ in her life, to see her change from, um, yeah, it's been a, a great blessing. We know that it's been God through that change in her. Brothers from Colombia. Crecí en un hogar que tiene influencia de la cristiandad. El hecho de ir a culto cada fin de semana de forma dificultosa intentar leer la Biblia o hacer una serie de oraciones me hacían creer de una forma errónea que mi espiritualidad era verdadera. Y por tal motivo me sentía cristiano. Creía que una vida llena de llena en la tradición era suficiente para obtener el fruto de una vida piadosa y de esa forma ganarme el favor de Dios. Y así pensó que por vivir una vida de Dios, por un cuerpo de Dios, en mi adolescencia aumentó esa honra de Dios solo de labios. Aunque no hacía nada inmoral frente a los hombres, tenía un pensamiento desenfrenado que iba desde But his, pecado uh, mind hasta las ofensas más grandes a mis adversarios. Nada fue ejecutado como tal. He Sin embargo, evil things with his en towards his enemies. Mi adultez temprana empecé a escuchar un mensajes de un evangelio que alimentaba ese ego y amor a mí mismo. Un evangelio suave so he would, que me hacía he would have preachers or people he would like to listen to that would help his uh, ego uh -huh. and uh, uh, encourage him in that way. Es una de las formas que Dios utilizó para traerme a este país y seguía de forma ferviente ese so tipo de enseñanzas, las cuales distaban de la enseñanza bíblica y la negación de uno mismo promulgadas por Cristo. And he started to hear uh, biblical teaching forma, that would talk about self-denial, very different than what he was used to. De enseñanzas estaban um, so he saw it through embargo, YouTube. Mi orgullo ignoraba todas esas señales. No fue sino que hasta Dios quebrantó mi, que Dios quebrantó mi orgullo. So God broke his pride. Situaciones difíciles. Hace cinco años, But five hace years una ago. mala racha en mis relaciones personales, no veía avance alguno en mi vida, y ese tipo de enseñanzas de falso evangelio no lograban sanar ese vacío generado en mí. Y realizó que ese falso gospel que había oído no era realmente satisfactorio. Aparecían videos del siervo del Señor, como Paul Washer, Tim Cowell, John so McCarthy, he saw, entre otros, like donde and veía Tim Conway. y comprendía que estaba siguiendo un evangelio diluido. Que no and they helped him to understand that the, that gospel was a deluded gospel, it was a real gospel. Solo para buscar mi vanagloria personal. Dios fue aparejando las cosas para llegar a este país. Desde asistiendo a una iglesia de supuesta sana doctrina, ya que no encontraba algo cercano a eso. He started to go when he got to Guatemala, something, no uh, a church that uh, appeared no to be of a sound doctrine. Y por muchos factores... Un impulso en buscar una iglesia de but he wasn't really satisfied no there, so he started to look online to see if there was another y es así, uh, en la bondad de un Dios soberano, encuentro por internet una congregación so de glorificar a Dios y a la obra things. redentora de su Hijo amado, la cual nos reconcilia. En estas causas que el Señor me va poniendo, le doy la gloria al Eterno, el cual en su bondad ha tenido misericordia de mí. God has been merciful Al venir aquí, him. me... Me supe, vi por mis propios ojos lo pecaminoso que era, the, the la falta de bondad que había de mí, um, la imposibilidad de no hacer algo para poder agradar a Cristo. Es aquí to, donde um, viene mi verdadero arrepentimiento, mi verdadera salvación. Um, aquí en la iglesia bautista reformada en Torcha encontré un lugar donde entendí perfectamente cuál era mi condición como pecador. Here at um, Iglesia en Torcha I was able to really understand my condition before the Lord. En cada discipulado, en cada discipleship, en cada servicio me siento profundamente agradecido por esa gracia I'm think, que el Señor me ha concedido, to God, que me ha regalado ese maravilloso tesoro inmerecido that God has given me that gift of salvation de escuchar el evangelio claro y to be able to hear the gospel clearly presented de pecador y malvado soy que no tengo sinful man I am en mí porque en mi condición natural soy reprobado por Dios 
Solamente me queda tener fe en mi Cristo Jesús. My only option is to have faith in Christ. En el día de hoy hago pública mi convicción so y agradezco a Dios por todas his, las cosas uh, que ha pasado, las cuales han servido para construir mi carácter. Nada en mí tiene valida. Todo es la gloria para Cristo me. que dio la vida perfecta en orden de But salvar. Christ gave his perfect life for me. Explicando que toda tu confianza está en Cristo. Queremos um, juntos como Iglesia Antorcha, queremos bautizarte en el nombre del Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. ¡Woo! been a joy to see Hugo's faithfulness to be discipled and his faithfulness to preach the gospel with us. And so we're praying the Lord continues to help him to grow and uh, to uh, be a, a good brother in the church. He's, a, he's somebody who understands, has a better understanding of doctrine and, and maybe the systematics of doctrine. Maybe that comes faster than him. He's a math teacher. Maybe that, I don't know if it comes <laughs> together. For math teachers, you can ask Josh. To, <laughs> but uh, as we prepare the the, the final video, the uh, the it's it's very in, encouraging to see his faithfulness in that uh, that especially the area of discipleship. The last testimony we have is Astrid. She's uh, someone who was invited to by the by by someone who was attending the, or someone who used to be a part of our church. She worked with them. Años atrás no conocía nada de Cristo. Recuerdo que con mi padrastro siempre íbamos a la iglesia como a un paseo. So mi mamá por otro up, lado nos um, llevaba a otras iglesias church, like donde recuerdo outing, que todo era um, solo música. En nuestra casa no conocíamos nada de la palabra de Dios. Really siempre vivía engañada conmigo misma, pensando que era una persona buena she cuando en realidad era person. una mujer necia, desobediente a mi madre. Inmoral, asesina de corazón con mi nombre, mentirosa, uh, but really idola, the reality orgullosa, was that she was to her parents, codiciosa, that egoísta, she was, uh, preocupada immoral, solo por mis um, problemas. Heart, um, Vivía una vida mundana, pensaba, a, a pensaba solo life. en sentirme bien y no, veí, y no veía mi rebeldía en mí. Seguía, y así seguía pensando que era una persona buena. And even um, living that type Hace of lifestyle, atrás, she still thought she was a good person. Con mi hijo, y yo asistí a una iglesia evangélica so she started, um, donde she me has motivaron a, a son a pasar al frente a repitiendo church, una oración uh, evangelical church. acto en el cual me hicieron creer que estaba recibiendo a Cristo en mi But corazón to this church, um, ahora to con, pray con la cual and so she después she de haber hecho esta prayer. oración y después de salir de la iglesia mi vida seguía siendo la misma but after leaving Entonces, the service no that day she still was the same person there was no change in her en esa iglesia no, predi no predicaban nada del evangelio in, in that la church Biblia they wouldn't really preach the gospel de 10 a 15 minutos y cambiaban el mensaje por experiencias personales and so The, mo, the preaching was more on personal experience, declarando um, riquezas, escuchando and solo also about prosperity, bien. and anything that would make the people feel good. Y así pasamos unos meses en esa iglesia. So they were there for a couple Donde months. Si no asistía, eh, los días que ellos me decían, ellos le llamaban 21 días de oración, so they yo would have perdía these, la cobertura um, con Dios. These no kind of like fasting for a period of time, and if you weren't participant <coughs> of those uh, prayer no meetings, then no um, you were you would lose the covering of God. Um, Todas estas experiencias las compartía con con un compañero y so que ahora es from a, a coworker. Um, she would share these experiences of her going to church about uh, eh. with this coworker. And that coworker was going Recuerdo to our church. Yo que yo le pedía permiso. Una vez le pedí permiso para so ir a un time, retiro. She, she, she was wanting to go to some retreat, um, all night vigil or something, and he didn't give her permission to go do that. 
según ellos, like to ask eh, off from work in, son in, in the sense he didn't give her the days off because he was the, the, the supervisor. Eh, en mí habían concusiones porque este mi compañero de trabajo eh, so it was a little confusing to her. I was like, wait, but he's evangelical. Why is he letting me go to a retreat? Are evangelical retreat? He said, uh, he would tell her, I would, I would prefer you go and go have fun with your, with your son, to have like a permission to go have fun with your son, than to go to one of these retreats. No me da permiso si es algo para Dios, ¿verdad? Es, it was confusing to her. She's like, well, wait a second, you're going to treat God. No permiso, Why would you not? It was a little confusing for her during that time. Él, él, él no quería que participara en esas actividades, según yo, que eran para agradar a Dios. Uh -huh. So he he wouldn't. So he anyways. So they didn't. He didn't give much for that. But um, it caused her to think uh, that she was wrong in thinking like, no, these are supposed to be for the people of God. Pequeños momentos donde él me enseñaba la palabra de Dios. So at the workplace, um, this coworker was able to share. Uh, better no, doctrine no, with her no to help teach her. Nada, nada de la de Dios, ¿no? and she, she really, really was ignorant a lot about the word of God. So him and his wife um, gave them a invitation, gave her an invitation to come to the conference about two years ago. Um, and so she, they came. So for that, she had to get permission, right, to come to the conference. Desde ese día comenzamos a asistir a esta iglesia. And ever since then, she's continually came donde aprendo el Evangelio verdadero. And learned the y true por gospel. medio de la ley, entendí que no soy and una the law of God, buena. she understood her sin. Los mandamientos me enseñaron mi maldad. The commandments showed Supe her her, her, her wickedness. Decía, con mi antigua vida era el infierno. Para that how she was living her pecados. old life. Um, was Pero no she deserved hell. Acá en Antorcha me dieron una buena noticia. But she didn't only hear the bad news, she also heard the good news. A morir por mis pecados. How Christ came Siendo and died for him, knowing that uh, she didn't por, deserve it. Y él con su misericordia mandó a su único hijo a sufrir por mí. That um, God the Father sent his son Acto de amor que solo Dios hizo por mí. Porque yo en lo personal no podría dar a mi único hijo para sufrir and para que sufra y para que muera por pecador. Um, I, I personally wouldn't be able to give up my own y son si for, some, por for someone else. Por medio del evangelio Entendí que mi alma estaba perdida. So through the gospel, she understood her lost state. Porque yo no puedo salvarme a mí misma. She can't save herself. Solo la gracia de Dios pudo darme un corazón nuevo. Only the grace of God could give her that new heart. Tiene fe en el Señor. And have faith in Christ. Solo por su gracia puedo tener un arrepentimiento verdadero. And only by his grace you can really have true repentance. Antorcha ha sido una luz en mi vida. Cliff and Torcha has been a light um, to her life. En mi corazón tengo el deseo de aprender más de su palabra. I have the desire to learn more about his word. Quiero seguir su camino. I want to follow his ways. Camino que sé que no será nada fácil. I know that the, the way to follow Christ is not an easy, an easy way. Oro cada día para que Dios I me pray ayude today a luchar contra mis pecados. that God would give me the strength to fight against my sin. Todo lo que hago, all that I do, sea para agradar a Dios y no to do it for the glory of God. Dios me regaló un corazón nuevo. God gave Gracias me a new heart. Su obra en mi vida. I'm thankful ya for no the work he's worked in my life. Que ponía su confianza en los demás. En los problemas. I used to focus um, my, myself in, in the problems, problems in my life. 
no son tan importantes But como en comparación to mi my problem with God, those problems are nothing. Dios por medio del evangelio borró esa tristeza a mis problemas y gracias a él puedo compartir el evangelio And con so, mi hijo, through, through that, con through understanding amigos, the true gospel, she understood what her real problem was. Deseando um, que those, conozcan those problems la verdad, left, como but gracias now a Dios, she's right with the Lord, and that makes everything ellas. else. Um, Aprendí que todo en mi vida ha sido voluntad de Dios. She also realized that everything that's happened in her life um, has happened it's, it, under the, the will of God. A Dios sea toda la, la, toda la gloria por el cambio en mi vida. May God be glorified for the change that he has done in my life. Amén. Queremos bautizarte en el nombre del Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. For me, this is kind of like introducing family to family, you know, when I get to bring them here by video and let them speak. And so uh, we have maybe two minutes, two quick minutes, <laughs> two quick minutes for question and answers. Um, Sir, uh, Sergio, where, uh, you had a question? Oh, you got the mic. Okay, just, I'm sorry, we just have a, a very short time for Q&A. I kind of talked too long. It's a pastor thing. You know, you guys didn't... If there's any questions, it's okay if no, because we don't have time for them anyway. No. <laughs> well, I'm very open to be able to talk about uh, uh, any questions or comments that you guys have in the in the in the time, in the break time, but. Um, Please forgive me for not organizing, not taking, uh, administrating the time well to give you guys time for Q and A. But I'm open to those. Please talk to me in the in after church um, during the break. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, we give you the glory for everything that you've done in the lives of these dear people. We recognize that we could not do that. We recognize we cannot change a heart. We cannot save a life. We cannot forgive sins. We recognize our inability to be able to to change a, a soul. So we give you all the glory and praise, not only saving our souls, but then how you we see you continue to do that in a merciful way. You recognize you don't have to do that. You don't have to save more sinners, but how kind and good you are to continue this work. Please help us to be faithful in the in the work that you've given us to do. Lord, please help us to persevere. Please help the dear saints in Iglesia Antorcha um, to be able to persevere to the end. In your name we pray. Amen.